Dun 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 Okay, I'm I'm gonna just I'm just gonna stop there. Hello everyone, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and welcome to my top 10 best movies of 2014. The time has finally come. I'm gonna basically give you guys my top 22 just because since I'm 22 Tiger Dude, why not do a top 22 just for the fun of it? The main focus will be my top 10. But yes, you guys, there could be some movies you love that aren't going to be in this list. So if you don't agree with it, that's okay because film is subjective. But this list is just all based on my own opinion. There were 19 movies in the year 2014 that earned my honorary 4 out of 4 star rating. The movies that are near perfect or perfect to me. But there's going to be a few movies I gave 3.5 out of four stars that are going to be in this list as well. So just to explain it to you all, my number 22 to 20 are going to be the movies I gave three and a half out of four stars. And then from number 19 all the way to my number one, those are going to be the films that I rated four out of four stars that I gave throughout the entire year of 2014. Number 22, Gone Girl. Really great movie, great performances, amazing direction by David Fincher, a very dark, very gritty, crazy movie that has a very immersive storyline. Number 21, Big Hero 6, Disney just hits it again with their animated features and Big Hero 6 just has wonderful animation, a great message about grief and it has a great blend of the Avengers and the Incredibles mixed in together. You get yourself a very heartwarming and just a very genuinely amazing Disney animated feature. Number 20, Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm hooked on a feeling, bow, bow, bow. I'm high on believing, bow, bow, bow. Great job to Marvel with this movie with awesome characters, awesome music, and very awesome action sequences. Guardians of the Galaxy was just a hell of a lot of fun to watch. Number 19, Tracks, an amazing true story on this woman that had to travel over 1,000 miles in the desert like seriously you have to be one of the most committed people to do something like that but how this film told that incredible and very inspiring true story was just phenomenal and Mia Wasikowska just gives possibly the best performance in her entire career number 18 Godzilla an awesome movie with a very cool storyline that has a very nice build up to Godzilla when we finally get to see him in the finale. Edwards just does a very nice job making me feel like one tiny speck when we're in those moments of actually seeing Godzilla. Number 17, Snowpiercer. A very interesting and great movie about social commentary between the poor and the rich. A very great storyline that makes you think at the same time Chris Evans just owns his role in the movie and the rest of the performances were very well done. Number 16, Boyhood. Probably one of the most dividing movies for a lot of people. Some find it to be a very pretentious and boring movie, which is understandable. And then there's some that think it's a wonderful experiment for Richard Linklater to do. Personally, I think it was a fantastic thing for Richard Linklater to try. Wonderful writing, wonderful direction from Richard Linklater. It felt so raw. I would have loved this movie even if it took two years to make just because in general it's just a great movie in my opinion at least I do understand why it's not a film for everyone number 15 front data a very well directed and very immersive movie a wonderful Western movie but it's not your Western movie or it's all like get it here partner no this is a raw drama western movie great sense of humanity and you do appreciate life and what you have in life because you know not everyone is gonna have an easy life so watching a movie like Frontetta, it does make me grateful for the life that I do have. Number 14, Whiplash. <laughs> amazing performance from Miles Teller and J.K. Simmons. Awesome drum beats, amazing music, an intense and freaking 
great finale. Whiplash is just freaking awesome. Number 13, The Guest. It's pretty much Drive meets Halloween when you have the 80s music vibe that Drive gives you, but you get the John Carpenter vibe in The Guest as well. There's great suspense. Dan Stevens just kills it. He makes a great debut actor as well as Mike Monroe. Number 12, Life Itself. This documentary was a great way to show the career life of Roger Ebert and his relationship life with his wife as well as Gene Sisters. He was one of my inspirations for really starting this channel and he is the reason why I do use the 4 out of 4 star ratings here on my movie reviews for my channel. It got me a little bit emotional because you know it's Roger Ebert and he will be missed. So rest in peace to Roger Ebert and life itself. Thank you for paying a great honor to Roger Ebert. And number 11 is The Raid 2. Holy shit is all I gotta say for this movie. There were so many moments where I went, oh shit, oh god damn, e, ooh. I reacted a lot watching The Raid 2. When you could have me reacting throughout the whole movie, holy shit, you know that you're doing yourself a damn great job there. It takes the action and it takes the violence to a whole new level. Now let's get to my top 10 best movies of 2014. Here we go. My number 10 is Begin Again. I saw this movie the day before my birthday and I gotta say I'm so glad this movie came out on my birthday weekend because man I really truly love Begin Again. I knew when watching this movie that this would totally be one of those movies that hits home run for me because how it was executed, how Begin Again was told, it was just amazing. I love the music in here. Kira Knightley was wonderful. She sings beautifully. Mark Ruffalo was great. Haley Steinfeld was great. Everyone does a really great job in Begin Again. And the movie really has a great message about you're gonna hit a very dark place in life. You're gonna really hit rock bottom, but that doesn't mean that's the end of your life. Eventually, you're gonna rise back up and you're going to begin again. I loved how the movie just expressed that so well. And Mark Ruffalo and Kira Knightley, you know, there was surprisingly no cliched love relationship between them. And I thought that was pretty refreshing, you know. They still had a very good chemistry with each other, even if they weren't having like feelings for each other. It was just one of those heartfelt and feel good movies. I love movies like that and Begin Again definitely delivered it to me. I love Begin Again again and it is by far one of the best movies of 2014 and it was just a wonderful movie to come out on my birthday weekend number nine speaking of breath of fresh air movies it's chef it has very fresh and original writing from john favreau who also directed the movie and starred in the movie and i really like john favreau he doesn't really make much movies especially when it comes to him actually being in the movie but i thought john favreau was great here everyone in this movie was great they weren't trying to go for the oscars or anything like that it was just a movie that wanted to tell a story but at the same time wants you to have a great time at the theaters because that's what going to the movies is all about you want to get invested but you also do want to have fun and chef delivered on both of those things and man was I hungry as a motherfucker after this movie chef is just wonderful though John Leguizamo I'm so glad John Favreau gave John Leguizamo a chance to shine in the movie because I feel like John Leguizamo doesn't really get the credit he deserves as an actor. Robert Downey Jr., for the three minutes of screen time that he has, he was awesome. Sofia Vergara was actually really good too, where she doesn't play the cliched, screamy and loud character that she does in Modern Family. She was actually a very calm and actually understanding ex-wife. She and John Favreau, they're divorced, but 
You could tell that even if they're divorced, she cares for John Favreau and she does want him to succeed with this whole food truck business. And it does have a very wonderful and heartfelt father-son storyline going for it as well. Number eight is Captain America the Winter Soldier. Oh yes, and of course, speaking of having a fun time at the movies but telling a great story, that would also go to Captain America the Winter Soldier. It fits very well with the whole spy genre when you really think about it. It's a great superhero slash spy type-ish movie, and I thought Captain America the Winter Soldier pulled it off so well. Captain America the First Avenger was great. I think that's a very underrated movie. I really enjoyed that one, but I do think the Winter Soldier just steps up from its original film. Of course, Chris Evans, Scar Johansson, Anthony Mackie, Samuel Jackson, and the rest, they all do a great job. The action scenes are thrilling. The storyline was awesome. It's so well directed from the Russo brothers. And overall, Captain America the Winter Soldier, hell yeah, America, it's great. Number seven is Birdman, or the unexpected virtue of ignorance. Birdman is just a very unique, original movie that has wonderful cinematography. You have to really respect the fact that this film it takes one continuous shot, pretty much for like 98, 99% of the movie. Michael Keaton gives one of the best performances of, of his career. Emma Stone was wonderful. Edward Norton was just awesome. He was funny. Zach Galifianakis does a wonderful job here. Everyone in this movie really brings in this A game and Alejandro Gonzalez Inurritu does a phenomenal job just directing Birdman. I just love the overall storytelling. I love the camera work with the overall movie and I just love what the film was trying to accomplish. It is definitely a cinematic achievement. Birdman was definitely worth driving 30 minutes to the theater because it's definitely a great theater experience I got out of that movie. Ka -ka! Number six is Song of the Sea. Now, you all know how much I love the animation genre, and Song of the Sea definitely takes the cake for best animated feature of 2014. The storyline to Song of the Sea is what I call wonderful. It's magical. It's a very original storyline. Oh my god, the animation looks beautiful. So, there were some scenes where my jaw dropped because the animation looks phenomenal. The details, the way the color, the details just flow. It's beautiful. I love the Song of the Sea song and I loved how the storyline was told. Great voice work from everyone involved. And it's a nice film to watch because I'm missing traditional animated movies. We're not getting enough of them, but movies like Song of the Sea just show why I just love traditional animated movies so damn much. Welcome to the Grand Budapest Hotel. That's right, that's my number five. The Grand Budapest Hotel. This is the definition of what you need in a Wes Anderson movie. There's a lot of funny moments into this movie, a lot of quirky moments. The characters all have a great sense of personality and everyone, even if their parts are small, such as Bill Murray or Owen Wilson, they just really give it their all. The cinematography looks great. It's one of the most original movies I've seen in 2014. The music from Alexandre Desplat is phenomenal. I love the score. The Grand Budapest Hotel is an amazing example of why I love movies. So thank you so much Wes Anderson. You, you are the man. Same to the entire cast. So Grand Budapest Hotel is by far one of my favorite movies of 2014. My number four is Lone Survivor. Now, I know what you're all thinking, um, but Tony, 
that's a 2013 release. Yes, that's the one thing I always hate about these releases. You know, I consider this a 2014 film because it came to my area in 2014. And man, was it a great way to start 2014 because Lone Survivor was my first film of 2014 and it already start off my year to a great start. Lone Survivor is one of the best war movies I've ever seen. It's very effective. It's highly engrossing. How Peter Bird told the story was phenomenal. I thought the performances were all great from Mark Wahlberg, Taylor Kitsch, Ben Foster, Emil Hirsch, they all do a great job. The war scenes are very bloody, they're brutal, and it just makes you grateful for the men and women that are out there serving our country and makes you really grateful for the life that you have. This is one of those movies that just really had me so invested that by the time it ended, I was in tears. Lone Survivor is excellent in my opinion and it is in my spot for number four. Of the Number three is, yes, you've guessed it, Apes on Horses, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And this is another movie I got to see on my birthday weekend. I can honestly tell you right now, 2014 was the best birthday weekend I've had in terms of movies. Because the day before my birthday, I got to catch Begin Again. And I love that movie. And then on the day of my birthday, I got to catch Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And my birthday went bananas because this movie was incredible. Not only is it just a great blockbuster movie, but in general, it's just a great movie. The characters, the story, the cinematography to the visuals, the execution, the movie just succeeds at all of those things. Rise of the Planet of the Apes was great, but Dawn of the Planet of the Apes definitely steps up from its predecessor. It is a phenomenal movie. Matt Reeves, such a fantastic job by him. Andy Serkis, Toby Kibble, great job, as well as the other ones that do motion capture the apes. And as well as the humans like from Gary Oldman, Jason Clark, even Kerry Russell, I thought they all did a very great job. The action sequences, very dark, it's haunting, and it's very exciting. I was at the edge of my seat with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I was like, just wow. Number two. X-Men Days of Future Past. And look, the poster's actually right here with me. <laughs> wow, this movie just blew me away. And it is officially the best X-Men movie I've ever seen. Storytelling was great. Brian Singer, I'm so glad he came back because he did a really great job just directing the movie. The pacing of the movie was very fluid. The characters are amazing. I love that the original cast and the new cast, they just get to be in one movie. X-Men Days of Future Past is my favorite superhero movie of 2014. And it is my number two. Of the And now the moment is finally here. My best movie of the year 2014 is Interstellar. And I'm sure a lot of you were expecting that considering how much gushing I was doing in my movie review. But everything I said in my movie review for Interstellar, I said it all. This movie, it took mind blowing to the next level. I think it was so mind-blowing, it actually broke the mind-blowing scale. Especially during the moments when they're up in space and you see them go through the wormhole. My jaw dropped like... It was unlike anything I've seen in cinema for a very long time, you guys. From start to finish, I was sucked into Interstellar. I felt transported 
watching Interstellar. I love the ambition that this movie took. I love the effort. And in my opinion, it all pulled off so well. Interstellar is not only my favorite movie of 2014, but it is hands down one of the greatest sci-fi movies I've ever seen in my life. I was in tears, I was transported just throughout the entire movie. Wonderful performances from everyone, Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, Jessica Chastain, Mackenzie Foy. This movie truly is a cinematic achievement and I am proud to just call this cinematic achievement the best movie of 2014. So everyone, that's my top 10 best movies of the year 2014. Let me know in the comments down below, you guys, what are your top 10 favorite movies of 2014? This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and stay tuned for my top 10 worst movies of 2014 that will be coming. And don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power! Yeah.